Hello everyone. If you're watching this video, and you're interested in product information in uh, fully automatic ramen setting machines. Uh, my name is Bob Miller. I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's East Coast time, folks. If you're looking for me, that's the phone number. I am your factory authorized sales rep for the entire product line of Edward Siegel automatic setting machines. Edward Siegel is a family-run business located in Connecticut, and they've been manufacturing ground machines since 1942. They are the number one selling brand automatic setting machines that you will see in the U.S. Today, I will be presenting controls, features, and settings on the entire product line of automatic setting machines. Let's get into it. Edward Siegel has three different types of automatic setting machines. The first machine I'm going to feature is the 3P6 and the 3P6X. I happen to have a 3P6 here in the shop. Uh, the 3P6 is a heavy duty industrial version of this model. Uh, this 3P6 is considered a automatic setting machine, semi-automatic, and requires the operator to have to hand feed the grommet and washer on every setting cycle. This is our entry level automatic setting machine and has an entry level price point. This is our model 3PGW. This is a fully automatic uh, grommet setting machine. This is our mid-level machine. It does feature two hopper bins and two race raceways, which gravity feeds the grommet and washers into the setting stroke. The operator sets on a foot pedal and sets the grommet and washer. This is a 100% air-driven uh, machine, um, and it's a pretty good machine. <clears throat> I consider this target marketed for the sign and graphics uh, sign shop applications. This is our mid-level automatic setting machine with a mid-level price point. And this is our deluxe automatic setting machine, model number 4KGW. This is the model that you'll see out in the field nowadays. This has been in the market for the past 12 years. This is our number one selling automatic setting grommet machine. Um, it once again is a fully automatic uh, setting machine. Um, and this is considered, I consider this an industrial, heavy duty, heavy use application machine. Um, and this is our most expensive model and it has a heavy duty price point. There are three size setting guides that you can use in your automatic setting machines. As a general rule of thumb, these machines can be set with the number two, number three, or number four die set. There is, uh, when you order your fully automatic machines, especially the 3PG and the 4KGW, you can only configure that machine with one die set and one style of grommet and washer. So work closely with myself and the sales staff at Ever Siegel to determine what's the right size grommet and washer for your applications. The only other instance here is on the model 3P6 and 3P6X, you can actually interchange die sets on that machine. In my shop, I happen to have a number two and a number three die set, and I also happen to have uh, snap and rivet uh, grommet sets for this machine. I find this machine very versatile. I use this for other applications aside from sign and graphics. That's why I have other die sets. And this is the only one where you can interchange uh, die sets. There are three, three ways, three styles to mount your automatic setting machines. The first is to take your machine and to bench mount it or bolt it to a tabletop surface. The second is to order a, a mobile base with casters. I happen to have one of those here. This is a mobile base with casters. I like this. I like having the workflow of having my grommet machine mobile on my table surface. So that means my workflow is I bring the grommet machine to the work. Uh, another way to mount your automatic setting machines is a steel uh, freestanding base with mobile casters that we make. It is a four legged steel base, and your grommet machine bolts to that. On caster, so you can, you can move it around your shop. Um, and then the other way that I like to uh, set your grommet machines is something I'm a big fan of, of what I refer to as insetting your grommet machines. Or more simply put, cutting a hole in your table surface and mounting your setting base so it is flush and parallel with the work surface on this. So this here is considered your setting base, and this would be your table surface. I am a huge fan of mounting my fully automatic ROM machine flush to the table surface. 
on to the next topic. Uh, in my shop, I have three styles of workflow that I use when I use my automatic sewing machine. First one's pretty straightforward. I knock in grommets and washers into fold over hems and banners. The second is something that I want to encourage, encourage all of you to do, users, with your fully automatic machine. And that's start uh, getting into the hanging side business. Um, when I bought my first automatic, uh, Edward Siegel automatic on machine in the year 2000, I bought a 92 GW. And it was very expensive for me. And I had to uh, cost justify what else can I do with this machine aside from sending grommets and washers and fold over hems. So I came up with a product line of hanging signs. I am an outdoor event specialist and I decorate trade shows and outdoor festivals. So I've developed a product line of hanging signs that I refer to as tent headers. This is one of my core tent headers that I usually take to festivals. This is a one foot by four foot uh, tent header printed on four millimeter chloroplast. And nowadays I get nine of these per sheet. So uh, I get a pretty good yield. And I typically, when I typically go to an outdoor festival, I usually sell between 80 and 120 tent headers. I have found this to be a good business for me. A, another hanging sign that I'll typically take to an outdoor festival is a two foot by three foot, usually menu boards, price list, stuff like that. I usually hang them horizontally or vertically. I do make a couple of other size hanging signs. One of them is what I call a barnstorming sign, where this is a six inch by 12 inch. I make a lot of these, all different types of applications. No smoking, fire extinguisher, exit, that kind of stuff. And I do punch grommets and washers into them. And I have one other style of workflow that I use with my automatic setting machine. I frequently punch in hanging holes into some low end signs. Um, at a trade show or at a uh, outdoor festival, these are typically regarded too as an exhibit sign or a booth sign. Um, they're typically plain Jane, uh, black and white. Um, and I usually just punch a hanger hole in there. I don't bother with the washer. There are three speed settings that I've learned from when I use an automatic setting machine. The three speed settings have a significant correlation to justifying this machine. The first is what I call rapid fire grommet setting. You are going to love how quickly and how efficiently you can rapid fire set grommet and washers. You literally can do these as quickly as you possibly can feed the material and step on the setting base. Um, it is a colossal step up from hand setting grommet and washers with a hand press. You will love the rapid fire action on these machines. These machines are so quick and they operate and set them so quickly, I find that I constantly have to tell my, my customers to slow down the process. Um, the second speed function of setting automatic grommet and washers are something what I call the dreaded corners. I find it difficult to set grommet and washers in the corners because the operator doesn't have a lot of material to hang on to uh, when you're putting that into the grommet setting stroke. So I tell people all the time, I see a significant slowdown in my workflow when I go to set the corners. That's why I call them the dreaded corners. The third <coughs> speed of settings with your grommet machine is something what I call an uphill climb. What in the world does that mean? Uh, grommet machines, the setting base for the grommet machines are typically up, up off the table surface. So for example here, for me to get this material into the setting base, I have to be uphill. I have to be up like this. And I'm gonna show this with a piece of banner material. I have to lift that banner material up, uphill, and put it into the setting stroke. I refer to that as an uphill climb. Your uphill climb has a significant correlation on your speed of settings. On to the next topic. Your choices for grommets and washers. Edward Siegel Incorporated manufactures grommet machines. We do not manufacture grommet and washers and we do not sell grommet and washers. You need to purchase these in yourselves directly. The national supply companies and the regional supply companies do not sell 
the style grommet washers that you need for automatic setting machines. Those style grommet washers are considered machinable grommet washers. You, the customer, need to purchase these directly from the manufacturers that stamp out grommet and washers. Um, both myself and the sales staff at Every Single will provide you the code numbers of which grommet and washers you need to you need to order. Both myself and Edward Siegel have a long-time business relationship with the folks at Stimson Grommet and Washers. They have been a family-run business. They've been stamping Grommet and Washers since, I believe, 1852. So, uh, the nowadays are pretty good at making Grommet and Washers. So, once again, we'll provide you the code numbers you need for that. Your choices when ordering Grommet and Washers. Uh, obviously, whatever number die set you have, or whatever grommet size grommet washers you're going to order. Typically, you guys order grommet washers, uh, brass, nickel, or colored anodized. Uh, the grommet manufacturers typically sell them in uh, gross, uh, which would be 144 pieces, and that would be paired set of grommet and washer. Um, uh, are your second choice for ordering grommet washers? I'm shooting this video in May 2022. Right as of now, there is a global shortage of brass, nickel, and anodized grommet and washers. All the manufacturers are able to are able to produce are aluminum grommet and washers. So make sure you get in touch with us so we get the correct code numbers for you. So you're ordering correctly for your machine. And the other thing you need to know about ordering grommet and washers is you're going to be ordering machinable grommet and washers. We all know with our hand setting presses. We order self piercing grommet and washers. Just so you know, you cannot take self piercing grommet and washers and put them in an automatic machine and vice versa. So order accordingly. On to the next topic. I have taken it on my own to develop a common call list of banner material commonly used that we see in banner making applications and in particular uh, hemming applications and, and grommet setting applications. I'm going to go over this with you quickly. It's pretty straightforward. 13 ounce front lid, 15 ounce front lid, 18 ounce black back, whether it's single sided or double sided, a uh, 20 ounce pole banner, typically is uh, super smooth both sides, a 26 ounce truck tarp material that I use for other applications aside from sign and graphics, a uh, 20 ounce uh, backlit Panaflex material, uh, billboard material, seven and a half ounce and four and a half ounce uh, billboard black back material, typically uh, PVC or, or PE, and then mesh material. Typically nine ounce, ten ounce uh, mesh material. As you know, there are two different phenomenon style mesh patterns that are available, and there are two different style mesh materials that would be with release liner, without release liner. Another common call material that I use uh, in my hanging sign business would be a four millimeter core blast and seven millimeter polystyrene. And I'm a significant part form of product support that myself and the staff at Edward Siegel are going to provide to you is a monster file. This is what I call my monster stripe file. I have developed six monster stripe files for you. Each one of the six files has a different code number on there or different material thickness or those common call materials that I've selected. I will say, you order a machine, I'm going to send this to you. What we need you to do is to go out to your printer, take some butt roll or scrap material, and print out this 5x10 print for us of the common call materials that you use in your shop. <coughs> we need you to slip down, these are four inch ribbon strips. We need you to slip these down and hem these for us and send these to us. So we set the setting pressure on your machines according to the raw material that you use in your shop. Once again, it's called a monster file, stripe file. There are 11 of these, four inch up on one sheet. I am going to show you what these stripe files look like. I have a bunch of them done already. This is what it looks like final product. This particular one is 18 ounce, uh, 18 ounce block out. So there's your four inch stripe file. And you can see that I hemmed that and I have grommeted that. I got a couple more of them up here for you. That is a seven and a half ounce billboard. Oh, here's a good one. Here is your. Here is your nine ounce mesh. And let me see, I've got one more. I've got oh, 13 ounce front lid. This is your monster stripe file. This is part of the product support that we provide when you're ordering a machine. 
We need you to make these samples and send us to us at the time when you order your machine. We need to have these on hand. We will not start assembly on your machine if we don't have your sample goods at our location. Uh, and also here, this is a printout, a 5 by 10 printout of what your monster to trip file looks like so you get an idea what it is like at, at full size. So, in any event, that is my presentation on the entire product line of automatic setting machine manufactured by Edward Siegel Grama Machines located in Connecticut. My name is Bob Miller. I'm your factory authorized sales rep. I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's East Coast time, folks. If you're looking for me, that's the phone number. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, and that is a wrap.